In this video, I'll walk you through a step-by-step -step guide on how to create and style a contact form for free using WP Forms that not only works the part, but also matches the style of your site's branding. By the end of this video, you should be able to successfully integrate the functionality of WP Forms with the aesthetic flexibility of Elementor. To get started, we need to install the following plugins. WP Forms, Elementor, and Essential Add-ons for Elementor. Upon activation, you may be redirected to the EA Add-on Setup Wizard. We will revisit this in a minute. But first, let's return to the Installed Plugins page to activate the other plugins. Check the boxes next to these. Click on Bulk Action, Activate, and Apply. Moving on, let's open up the Essential Add-ons plugin to enable the Styler widget for WP Forms. Switch from General to the Elements tab where we should find all 57 active elements within the add-on. Since we only need the form styler at the moment, scroll up to disable all elements, and then scroll back down to enable the form styler. Once that's done, let's head down to Save Settings. At this point, we are ready to create our contact form. So, let's hover over this to select Add New, which should bring us to this interface. Before we continue, we're required to choose a name for the form, so I'll go with something simple, like Contact Form 01. Underneath this, we should find a couple of pre-made templates we could pick from, or we could go with a blank canvas. Looking closely at the left side of our screen, we should find these central tools that control all we need to create a functioning contact form. Heading back to Fields, we've got three types under which all fields are grouped, the standard field contains free basic fields needed for creating simple forms. We've got the fancy fields that come with the paid plan. And lastly, the payment fields. Now, we won't be going in-depth into how these fields work since this video is centered more on styling this form than creating one. Though, we should have a basic understanding of how it all works as we move along. To add a new field, we can either click on it or drag and drop. Taking a look at our form reference, We've got a full name, an email address, a phone number, and a subject line. Since we can't access the phone number field in the free version, we'll have to improvise with the single line field. So let's add in two of this for the phone number and subject line. For the message field, let's make do with the paragraph text. Now that we have our desired fields in here, let's make adjustments to them, starting with the labels. So I'll change name to your name, and then change its format to simple. There's no need for descriptions, but we want to ensure the required option is toggled on. Now let's repeat the same for the email address. For the phone number, its label will be optional enclosed in brackets. I'll change this to subject, make it required. And lastly, change the label of the paragraph text to your message and make that required. Now let's move on to add in our placeholders, and while we are at it, we can also set the column width of these fields to 50%. So let's select the Name field and toggle to the Advanced tab, change its field size to Large, add in the placeholder Full Name, and lastly, let's change the column width by clicking on Show Layouts. Since we are going for a 50% layout, this would be our preferred choice, followed by selecting the first column. Now it may not look like it, but this field has now been conditioned to a display on a 50% left column layout, and it's not until we preview the form that we can confirm these edits. Let's do the same for the email address. Select Advanced, change the field size to Large, and set the placeholder text to Email Address. For the CSS class, click on Show Layout and select the two-column layout. But this time, we'd want to go with the second column to the right to align both fields side-by-side -side on a single row. Since we'll be repeating the same process for the remaining fields, I'll just speed up these edits. Taking a look at our design reference, it's got the Submit button titled Send Message. To change that, we can either click on the Submit button or switch over to the Settings tab to change its text to Send Message. And the same applies to the Processing text. We'll be leaving the Spam Protection and Security settings as they are. The notification settings are usually good to go by default, although I could do with changing the subject line to something like new email from website.com. The confirmation tab helps us condition what message a user sees 
or the URL they are redirected to after they've submitted a form on our site. So we can adjust the confirmation settings to display a success message upon entry. It can also take users to a page on our site or redirect them to a specific URL. I'll be leaving this set to the message confirmation type. Save all the changes we made so far. And that wraps it up for the first half of this video. Now that we've successfully created our forms, let's take things further by improving its appearance, which usually takes after the site's theme settings. So, this may look different for you depending on the theme you currently have installed on your site. And since we are done here, I'll close this up and head to the page where I'd like to add the contact form. Once you're within the design canvas, search for the widget WP Forms. If you've followed the steps in enabling the form styler, you should see two widgets here, one for the EA add-ons and the other for WP Forms. Let's drag that of the EA add-on to our desired location. Select the form you must have created and let's disable the form's title. Moving over to the Style tab, we should be presented with nine Settings tabs, each with its distinctive control over this entire element, starting with the Forms Background Color. This helps us control the color outside these fields, and it only makes sense to choose a color that complements its surroundings, so it wouldn't make sense in our case to use the color black, even when paddings and maybe a border radius has been added to this form. I'll get rid of these settings. Close the Forms Container tab and move over to Labels. Because we've disabled the form's title and we never used descriptions when building this form, this tab's setting is of no consequence. This tab presents us with control over the labels, starting with its margin. Let's move on to change the text color to hashtag B2B2B2. For its typography, I'll make the font family GT Walsheim, its size 12 pixels, and its weight 500. Please note that the font used here isn't in Elementor's font library. It was manually added to the site before this video recording. If you'd like to learn how to add custom fonts to any WordPress site, a video for that would be linked in the description. Moving on, let's open the Input and Text Area tab, which controls all we've got inside these fields. I'll be leaving the alignment set to the left and the background color to white. Taking another look at our design reference, the fields only have a border set to the bottom, so let's change this to solid. Unlink all border width values and set the bottom border to 2 pixels. Its color would be hashtag B6B6B6. And since we won't be needing border radius set to this, let's input 0 into these fields. Underneath this, this slider helps us control the text indent, but 0 pixels works just fine. This controls the input width, and we may want to leave that as it is, or change it to 100%. As for the width of the input height and text area, I wouldn't want to mess with those, but I could change the text area height to 150 pixels. Taking a closer look at this form, we can see that the texts within these fields are not equally aligned with the labels. So we could start by unlinking all values here and add little padding to the top and bottom. We could also add in a little bit of space between our fields. For the typography, I would want to bolden these text fields to set some contrast between the labels and input fields. So let's change the font family to GT Walsheim. Its size would be 14 pixels and the weight set to 600. Before we close the typography, I'd like to add a little bit of letter spacing to these input fields, so let's make this 0.5 pixels. And for the text color, let's open the placeholder tab and change that to black. Opening the Submit tab, Let's have one last look at our design reference as we make our final edits. I could begin by aligning this to the center, or just make this full width. Its background color would be black, and the text color white. I personally don't fancy much of this border radius we've got going on here, so I'll make that 2 pixels. Since we've already conditioned the button to a full width, we can only adjust the padding to the top and bottom, so I'll unlink the padding values and make this 20 pixels for the top and 20 for the bottom. This option allows us to add margins to the top of this button. And lastly, for the button's typography, I'll make this GT Walsheim. Its size 16 pixels and the font weight set to 600. We could also take a glance at the form's responsiveness across devices, which already looks good, but may need a bit of tweaking here and there. And that's about it. Let me know what you think about it in the comments below and share your thoughts on something you think I may have missed to get a conversation going. 
Thanks for watching, subscribe for more, and I'll see you in the next one.